Want to feel like you're racing in a race car with these? Welcome to Bad at Board Games. Well, he's Bad at Board Games. <laughs> I'm Brad Blake. I'm Topher Ferguson. And we're Bad at Board Games, so you don't have to be. Today, we're going to be talking about heat. It's hot? No, it's cold. It's very cold. It's, it's very heat. It's December. It's cold. <laughs> Why? Actually, it's not that cold. It's not December either. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. January. Oh, crap. We're, we're anyway, going 23 now. Come on now. Picked it up in December. How's that? Got it for Christmas. <laughs> Yes. Anyway, we're going to talk about heat today. Stick around to the end where we talk about our BGG ratings, the value rating, all those kind of fun things that will help you determine if heat is a game for you. So what do we have today? Who designed this? So this is a game designed by Asger Harding Graneru and Daniel Schult Peterson. It is published by Days of Wonder. And I'll be honest, Days of Wonder came back with a good one. Um, so this is good. I'm glad to see it. Days of Wonder was one of the first publishers that I got to know. So good game. Yep. They really had a high and then they kind of went down. Just kind of didn't hear from them for yeah, a while. Yeah. Now they seem to getting their mojo back. Yes. So what is the theme of heat? It's yes. not winter. So he heat, this heat, the 2022 game heat, pedal to the metal, is a racing game, and it's not racing in mechanics so much as the theme is mm -hmm. is racing. Um, we are each drivers racing around a track, whether we are battling each other or AI. Um, mm -hmm. Interesting mechanic with that. Um, trying to get to the finish line first while avoiding obstacles and blowouts, burnouts, and the like. Yeah. And the appearance, I like what they've done. So some of the things that are nice about this, it comes with two boards, two big, decent-sized boards, two-sided. So you get four tracks right off the bat with this. The appearance, you know, and I'll show some B-roll over this. It it looks nice. You know, they're, they're doing the lines to make, you know, to show the race car driver, like, sitting in there and all this wind is whipping past them. Um, cards are decent. They're, they're not too thin. They're not too thick. Kind of a linen finish-ish, but you don't feel it too much. Um, then their player boards are kind of like if you've ever played Zombicide, you know, that thin, thin paper-ish cardboard. But one of the nice things I like is it's easy to set up. They have enough spaces in the box to be able to sleeve all the cards and you can separate each one of the players by color and all the race cars and your little gear shifter have a spot in that and all the extra bonus cards do as well. So setup is... Just grab, trying to determine, you know, you're going to play a basic game, you're going to play an advanced game, and then get it out. So I've also set up Tile Tom today, and that's the opposite of this. <laughs> so I'll talk about this as a pro. I'm going to jump ahead. But all of that into the appearance, you know, makes this not, makes this nice. I've, I've just enjoyed the way it looks. But I like the old-time European race circuit, you know, shows and movies and things like that. So I'm a bit biased. That happens. <laughs> what about the mechanics, though? Yeah. So at the heart of this game, it is a racing game. So we are pushing our luck, trying to get around this track as best as possible while managing the obstacles that we have on the board itself. The gameplay itself is going to feel more in what you are doing in your hand. So this is very much a hand management game. You're going to have a stack of cards, you're going to be drawing up your cards every turn, and then that is what you have to play with. So that push your luck is going to come into play with different aspects. There's stress cards that cause you to draw random cards and see if you get it or not. Um, but ultimately, that is the basis of the game. Hand management, racing around this board, trying to get back to the finish line, depending on the number of laps. You may get lapped by other people. You may get stuck and burn out in the corners. 
Um, but you are just working your way around based on what it is that you have in your hand. One thing that is unique with this, I think that's special is that it's adding into your hand clutter and that comes with the theme. Mm -hmm. So as you play through this game, you're collecting heat cards or you are spending heat cards by adding that clutter into your hand, causing you to slow down in the long run, causing you to not have as many cards in your hand to be able to play from. So not only is it managing the numbers on the card, it's also managing the amount of stress you take and the amount of heat that you take that clutter up your hand to be able to take actions. Um, so that is the, the basis of it. It's a little bit of action selection that is partially simultaneous, partially on your own, depending on the type of actions that you're playing, um, managing, shifting your gears, you know, little things that add into it. But the basis is hand management and racing yeah. with push your luck. And we'll kind of talk about that a little bit in our stories, right? So not to completely dive into it, this is a how to play, right? But the gear shifting one through four tells you how many cards you can play. And that heat that you're taking, which Toe described, is a is a way to push your luck and be able to play more cards or be able to do something extra. But you're going to pay for it in the future. Yeah. So, like, what happened to me on the game we just played is I blew a corner, <laughs> like, at the beginning of the game. I think I blew the second corner, and then I was playing catch-up for the rest of the game. I didn't think I would ever even come into contention, but I actually kind of did at, mm -hmm. the, at the very end, at the very, very end. But um, you have to have those heat cards to allow yourself to make a mistake. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, then it's just, you You basically are putting your brakes on, you kind of lose your turn, you get stuck at a corner, and then you're starting, starting over again. Yeah. So. And opposite Brad, this last game that we played, I was, in the beginning, both of us were a little bit behind, but I caught back up with, the rest of the pack. So we played six players, only the two of us. We had four players using the AI um, card draw that's in the game, mm -hmm. the advanced rules. Um, the pack kind of got away from us. I caught up to the pack. I was kind of doing okay, not winning. I was in the lead a couple times, but not by much. And then at the end of the game, last turn, I blew the corner. And at that point, I was done and I came in last place. So I went from kind of staying with the pack and Brad being far away to all of a sudden, I blew a corner at the end of the game and couldn't in any way, shape, or form catch up. Uh, Brad and I both had moments where we did um, cause a lot of heat to come into our hand or into our deck, which meant at that point we couldn't do certain things like taking the added boosts and taking the added advantages that you can get because you just don't have them, or pushing your luck past corners and taking some heat to be able to make it around the corner a little bit better. And so we both had a little bit of a disadvantage. The game played us quite a bit yeah so the i guess the one and call it a strategy or not you have to and it's and this is kind of what i like about it because i do enjoy racing to a point i used to race and things like that but if you blow a corner you're blowing the race and this car this card game replicates that to the nth degree maybe a little bit too much <laughs> especially when you're playing the ai who never blow corners they always have a way of slowing down through them, but they never get stopped. So you blow a corner against the AI, it's a, it'd be a miracle that you actually win the win the game. So just kind of, it's an easy AI to play, to man, manipulate, but you're not, but it's a hard AI, you, you can't have any mishaps. Yeah. <laughs> and we mishap, because we're bad at board games. Yeah, yeah. we mishaped a couple <laughs> times. <laughs> I came in absolute last place. Brad came in second to last place. But, but yeah. So anything else you want to say story-wise? It was a blast when we played it with the group. Mm -hmm. Yeah. An absolute blast. Mm -hmm. Had a great time. We didn't play with the advanced rules like we did when me and him played. But I, I, I loved it. I loved it so much I played it solo. Yeah, I have not yet had a chance to play it solo. But the theme of what we did today was pretty much the same idea as playing solo. You're playing against the AI. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, the way that they incorporated some of the advanced rules into the game, and by advanced, it's not taking it extremely difficult. It's just adding in more modules, if you will, into the gameplay itself. And so you could play with some or none. Um, the weather itself took us a minute to try to figure out, but I think the idea of what that weather mixed in with the other cards does randomizes the game a bit. And so it adds some interesting perspectives. And in our case, it actually kind of hurt us in a couple locations if we wanted to take advantage of it. 
that is well thought out. Like that was fun to see, oh, I want to push my luck. I want to get past this. I want to take advantage of this extra boost that I'm getting. But if I do, I'm going to spin out right. and it's not going to be good. And the extra boost we had was in the absolute worst place on this board. So again, for good, true, bad at board games fashion, here we go. Um, it, it's it's a lot of fun. You know, push your luck is something that I never really used to like. And I've started to find, I think our gaming group is is really good with this idea of kind of like hassling each other and kind of ragging on, on each other. Yeah. <laughs> and and I've learned that that actually is a lot of fun. And that's been, I think what I enjoy the most about it is mm. that feeling, especially playing with lots of people, not just the AI is yeah. having that camaraderie and a little bit of bickering. And yeah, the, the nice thing with a group and you can play this solo, you don't have to, but um, is that the AI never fails, right? So with a group, you all kind of fail. I failed a corner. He failed a corner. That's going to happen. So you, you won't necessarily be out if you're not playing against the AI. So that's the benefit of, and the camaraderie of, of playing yeah. with people. So like, you know, the I enjoyed the solo. I got destroyed by the solo. Um, <laughs> just kind of like we both got destroyed. I got Fifth place, Tove got sixth place. <laughs> and when we say Tove got sixth place, let's be honest, they all got across the finish line, and I was like still on the McDonald's. Oh, that's right. Drive-thru. You still have, you were one space away. <laughs> so, yeah. anyway, just, you know, just realize the AI, AI doesn't falter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you're always going to draw the wrong cards that you need at yeah. any given time. So, that's another thing that's fun with, you know, these style games of having a deck and, and calling through it. Yeah. So, yeah, fun game. What do you like about it? What's your pros? Well, I was surprised how much it felt like racing. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I have done some racing in the past with cars. And I don't know, it kind of just felt like, oh, I got to get to this corner. And then I got to go slow down at that corner. And I got to go through the corner. And it it had that feel of it. And I think, and I, you're not, you don't even like racing, not right? Really. Yeah. But you enjoyed this. Oh, yeah. You know, like, so yeah. it's like, I think you this is accessible. So one pro is feels like racing. Mm-hmm. My second pro, and I may just spatter this off. It's easy to learn with a caveat because some of the rules are garbage. <laughs> we might disagree on that, by the way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I think it's easy to get to the table. Like, that's definitely my pros. Like, you know, for the base game, just playing, leaving out the advanced stuff. It's accessible to about anybody, I think. If you can get them past, I don't like racing games. Try it, mm-hmm. you know. Accessible, easy to get out to the table, you know, and and has that feel like, oh, you know. Mm-hmm. But those are my pros. Yeah, I, this does racing well. Um, I am a Euro gamer through and through, so this is normally not on my track. And and I've done some other racing games, some of which I have somewhat enjoyed, some of which I've really not enjoyed. This I thoroughly enjoy because I think they did it well. It's racing, but because it's racing cars and you got corners, everybody is throttled at moments. And so you never normally, what we do, feel like you are so far behind, you're never going to catch up. And when you do feel that way, like Brad was most of the game, he caught up. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that type of the racing aspect, I think is, is done very well. And I think it's done better when you add in some of these extra tiles because they can add the boost that you need if you are behind to be able to catch up even more. So that is well done. That is, that is really good. You know, when we played with our gaming group, not only was it our normal players, but we also had one of our gaming players bring his daughter into it as well. And so now we have somebody who maybe didn't know the rest of us as well, who I don't think had ever played a racing game. And she was sitting down now, was she win- winning the game? no. But she wasn't so far behind that she wasn't having fun. Mm-hmm. And that was another thing that's really, when Brad talks about accessibility, it is. Like, that immediately to me showed me how how good and accessible this game is. And maybe that's the Days of Wonder thing. I, I used to, they were my favorite publisher for a long time. And, and it was mm-hmm. games that were accessible. So maybe they just did a really good job. The designers did good with that. Mm-hmm. Um, I really do like how the AI works. I play a lot of solo games, so I go through a lot of, especially card-driven AI games, and this plays very different than a lot of them. I liked that a lot. It's, I I did not like how difficult, well, not that I didn't like how difficult it was, because it they do have advantages that we don't have. 
they can make it through corners without blowing out a lot better than we can. But I liked how it worked. It was instant to learn and play through. Yeah, I think I I would agree. They once you understand how these cards work, everything's right there, and you don't have to like look something up and go back and forth and do all these kinds of things. You're gonna learn. You're gonna learn this quickly. Mm -hmm. Will take me into my cons a bit. Mm -hmm. So when I look for solo game solo rules, there's nothing that says solo rules in the rules. <laughs> it calls these. The legends. So when you're looking at the advanced rule book and not finding solo games, and you're looking at the base game rule book and not finding anything that says solo games, I'm like, well, where's the solo games? I went online to watch somebody play it solo so I could understand how these cards work. Because I was in a hurry and I wanted to. But, like, it's called Legends. I wish they would just call it solo play or autonoma, and then, hey, you're racing against Legends. That would have made me be able to find it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so it's a dumb con, but I'm like, come on. Like everybody calls it solo play. Everybody calls it an autonoma something. You can put the fluff in it, but I couldn't when I was trick quickly trying to find it because I had about an hour to play and I couldn't find anything that said solo, I, I went online. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna argue that a little bit. And that's only because Brad and I read a little bit different. I did not find the rule book bad. Well, I'm just right now. I'm just talking about this, <laughs> and I was fully expecting when I got to that section that said legends to be like, "This is garbage," because that's what I kind of was planning for. It kind of made sense to me, but well, once I read the legends, does it does not. Yeah, it yeah. does not at all. It does say it in the paragraph text can be used also for solo play, <laughs> but that's it. It does not have a section that says for solo play, and I didn't see that. And I didn't look at the table contents. That maybe is my fault as well. Um, but I was not looking for solo play. I was only looking at it to be devil's advocate. Like Brad couldn't find it, can I? And I couldn't until I read the text with it. So I'll give you the con. Yeah, the, the reading, con. reading. Once you know that it's in Legends, them explaining this is not hard. Yeah, and it, and it does a good job. Mm -hmm. Now I will get to my other con, where there are things in here, and I he had he read it and he read it very meticulously and went, oh, this is what it means when you put the weather out on the track. I read it twice. I watched the video mm -hmm. and it still wasn't clear to me. Yeah. There, I think it's easy to overlook and get it wrong because you're used to, oh, draw one of these weather at tiles, put it down at the corner. It says in the rules, if it has these arrows, go to the next section. But it, it then doesn't tell you to leave the corner blank. You just move like that could have been explained a little bit better, I think. Yeah. So, it, you know, that's my opinion. Yeah, and it's how you read them. I will say, if you're reading this to learn how to play it, just take it line by line, and and it will start to make sense. Don't skip over things. Like, I think a lot of us who read a lot of rule books skip over diagrams or skip over certain things, and they did lay it out to actually read those, and that is different than normal. And I will give that to you completely because a lot of times we look for very specific wording because we are used to that when we get into these board games. And the rule book does not go into it like a lot of other rule books do that say do this and then do this. But if you read it, it's got a pair, it's got a period, so it says draw a tile. <clears throat> Doesn't say place it. <laughs> then it explains how to place it. And that is counter to how we do it. So yeah. but yeah. that's your that's your one of your cons. One of my cons, and this is solely as somebody who didn't read the rule book before I started playing, is there's a lot of things on the board that do not apply unless you're playing with the autonomous. So keep that in mind that some of these icons and things we don't need to pay too much attention to. I was getting caught up on that in my first play, thinking that it meant something that I had to play on, and mm. it didn't. Um, it makes perfect sense with the Autonoma, but I was, why is there a yellow line? What does that mean? Well, that means nothing unless you're playing with the Autonoma. So. Yep. Um, that's, I think that's the, and I'd heard people say like, oh, the rules are kind of like, if in the first time we played it, I'm like, well, the rules didn't seem that bad. We read the basic we didn't play the advanced and i was just like but then going back and then trying to play solo and then as we tried to play the advance or try to do something with weather i'm like okay now i understand why people are kind of like the rules some people may read this and be like what do you what's your problem other people who read things differently or skim or looking for keywords. i don't know some keywords something like me just went ah you know, so, and then had to look, and then everybody's kind of, I've watched a couple different playthroughs, and I don't think everybody's getting it quite right. 
<laughs> yeah, it might take a little bit for everybody to unify so, what we do. It's an easy game. However, it, it seems to have some, some yeah. I don't it's not complexity, misunderstanding. How's that? Another thing I wish they did is give you a player guide with text on it. And I think this goes back to the rules. So I'm interjecting with your rules here. The player board makes sense once you know all the iconography. But even once you learn the iconography, sometimes you still have to say, wait a minute, am I doing this? Am I doing this? What does this mean? Why am I doing this? And it they designed it so it looks awesome. It looks like the dashboard of a car. But again, it's the iconography and we still kept getting a little bit, or maybe I got a little bit confused by it as we played through. Even the last time we played through, I'm still like, wait, wait, what? Why? And you play it five, ten times, you'll get it. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's still one of those, like, how do you get into it quicker? How do you want to, you want, you know, you get this and you've got a bunch of people sitting there. You want, want to play it now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah. anyway, it, all in all, you want to play the base game. You'll be able to get up and running in 30 minutes. Yeah. You, you will. You might not be perfect at it, but you will, you'll be able to get up and running. Especially the base rules. You yeah. just play it and it's fun. Yeah. One more pro I have is replayability. Now, granted, we haven't played we enough did to get pros. bored. I know, but I'm going back to it. Um, replayability with this. As Brad mentioned, you get two boards, two-sided. That's four maps. And then when you are playing with the advanced rules, which you will likely, then you're placing out random tiles each time. It is going to change. Some of these maps are short. Some of them are longer. The turns can be crazy. The value of them they have created it in a way that we can play this and feel different. Mm -hmm. And I think it's going to be a game that will play for longevity. I think this is going to be a replacement racing game for a lot of people. I think this is going to be what's going to be on people's shelves. Yeah. And I know, I think it was one of the bicycle games. The yeah. racing games was one mm -hmm. of the big ones. But, La Marouche. And everybody who's played both has been like, yeah, this, this blows that out of the water. Mm -hmm. So where are we at on weight? Yes. So good thing with this game is it's a medium light game. It's 2.15 according to BGG. And I, I think that's right. Once you know the rules, the gameplay, the gameplay is not very difficult, but reading through some of the confusion, you know, we kind of bickered over that. Um, we had different members of the gaming group that had read the rules or had seen different videos than what we had seen. And so everybody was like, wait, does it say this? Does it say this? Does it say that? That was the hardest part of the game. The rest of it, the gameplay is not overly challenging. So that 2.15, I, I think that's right on, which brings us into a family style game as well. Yeah, yeah anybody can play this. This is, this, like I said, this is, in, I don't want to say it's entry level, but it's friendly. It's, it's non-gamer friendly. It, it just is. And it plays up to six. And it plays yeah. up to six very well. Too. Yeah, you're not going to feel like you're sitting there waiting for everybody else a million hours to get back to you to do something fun. Like, yeah. it, it's not, everybody has to pick their cards at the same time. So that's the, do some things at the same time, then you're going to move on your own turn, but everybody, nobody's sitting there thinking because we all thought and picked our cards at once. Yeah. So that and, keeps things moving. And even when you're not taking the active role play, I know this is one thing you don't like in games is sitting while well, everybody else is taking games. However, because of the aspect of push your luck and possibly racing out, yeah, you might be sitting for a little bit, but while you're sitting, you're ragging on the people. Yeah. And so that takes it away, which makes it a lot of fun. <laughs> so. so on to our value rating. So the value of this, re so MSRP, don't pay it. It's $75. You it, Right out of the gate, it's down to what, $60? $60. It, $60. Yeah. Um, it's getting harder to find, so it might be out of stock. You might have to find it at your local friendly game store. But I got it, or I think my son got it for $50 when he bought it for me for Christmas. So you can get this game way less than $75. So I hope you don't have to pay that or go on eBay or do any of those kinds of things. It will come back out. It's Days of Wonder, right? Um, so at $75, I, you know, let's say it's $100. If it was $100, I would rate this from a 1 to 5 as a 1. This I don't think this is... It's a good game, but at $100, I'm like, just just find something else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, at $50, where we got it, and I got it as a gift, right? I think this is... I'm going to say this is a 5. If you can get this for $50 or less, I think this is a 5 experience. Because you've got four maps, the fun you can have, the player count. Because we're always trying to find that 
past four that's still fun, and usually it's a five-player game, and then this goes to six. They have eight car places, even though they don't give you eight cars. They're going to come out with an expansion that allows you to play two more cars. This this could be a one-to-eight game that isn't going to take a ton of time. You can play a game in an hour. Uh, for eight players, that's amazing. <laughs> so to me... You know, even at that $60, like, so at $50 or less, it's a five out of five. If you have to pay $60, which I think is kind of normal, then four and a half, right? Um, so that's where I'm at with the value rating. I think I think for what you're getting and the experience you're getting out of this, you're getting a lot. You really are. I agree completely with that. Yeah. yeah. What I, is, or did you have something else? No, no, I, I, think, I think you nailed it, you know. We don't have many games that can play this high player count and still be fun, yeah. fast, efficient mm -hmm. that we want to bring to the table. Not we have to because we've got right. five people in our gaming group. Tonight. Right. And we play it twice in the same night. Mm -hmm. Like that. that's kind of unheard of. Usually we're playing, we play one game in two different groups and being able to get the whole team together and play it twice. That was, that was pretty great. Mm -hmm. So what is your BGG rating? What do you think about this? Yeah, solid eight. Solid it's a good game. I want to play it. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm at the same. I This is an eight. I, I don't know if it would be a nine, but it it's easily an eight. Easily an eight. Mm -hmm. Like, I I completely agree with you. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, and it may move up. I could see this. Well, we'll see. I mean, you're always speculating until you play it 10 to 15 times, right? I loved Hadrian's Wall. Hadrian's Wall, I still think is a great game, but it's not as great. As the first five to ten times I played it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I mean, like a half point. I'm not yeah. talking like it didn't go from like an eight to a seven. Mm -hmm. But it's like, okay, I like playing it. But I'm like, now I want to, I you, you play it enough, you want to play something else. Yeah. So I might say that this, if I had a family of, let's say five, even a family of four, but let's say I had a family of five, I might rate this a nine. Because whereas a gaming group situation, we're always cycling through games, a family situation, an accessible game that plays well, I think mm -hmm. it would be a little bit higher for me. I don't have a family of five so or higher. So that's not going to weigh into it for me. But that's where I would put it if you're in that situation of, mm -hmm. I've got some kids that want to get interested in gaming. Yeah, I can see it going up a little bit. But yeah, solid eight. Yeah. Both of us. That's Yeah, that's so we're going to drop this section in. So we decided to play it solo to make sure we both had a chance to play it solo. And this is a little bit out. You're going to see a cut in here after we went through our BGG rating. But we wanted to get this out there for our solo players and just quickly give you some some highlights. Toph, what did you think like from a 1 to a 10 of ease of playing solo? What would you give that? Yes. This is a 10 out of 10 in terms of the ease of solo play. Mm -hmm. Autonomous works. Easy. Simple. Works. Mm -hmm. What about you? What do you think? I think it's easy. I think this is probably the easiest solo game I've played. Like, you know, like, and by easy, I mean, I flip this card. I know exactly what to do. I don't have to reference other stuff. I don't have to continue to go look up the rules. You know, there's, there's really two things on this card that tell you, and then you have to reference a number on the track, depending on where you're at. It makes it easy. So the ease of the mechanic in solo, I agree, is a 10 out of 10. It's 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 great. Now, we had different ratings when we have a group of people versus solo. What's your what would your BGG rating be just like if you were just playing solo? Yeah. If I'm only playing this game solo, this gets a seven. And that is the drop in points due to the fact that part of why I enjoy this game is playing against other people and having that conversation that camaraderie that bickering that push your luck aspect the racing aspect as a solo game it doesn't really get the racing aspect for me it feels just like a push your luck and that's it now i still think it feels racing and that's why i wanted to play it solo when i played it solo and yet the i wish there was a mechanic in here where the ai failed Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that's the one thing it's missing. So for me, I'm kind of the same. I'm going to say it's a seven. I, I enjoyed it, but I got destroyed. <laughs> right. So I would love the AI to have something where it's like, oh, they messed up a little bit. Maybe they go back two spaces or something. It doesn't have to be a complete, another like they get crash or something, but 
I would like to see something in there, you know, one out of 10 chance where the guy in the lead is going to falter. Yeah. So. Yeah, because we can, we can spin out. They right. can't really spin out. Right. Yep. So hopefully this was helpful. We're going to try to do more of that. And if we don't get it in our regular video, we'll try to do something solo after the fact. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much. And back to the regular video. We really do appreciate you guys hanging out. We reviewed this early because I put up the, the list and you guys wanted to see Teletum or Tiletum. Well, that video would have been this week as well. And hopefully you've enjoyed that. And we want to continue to get feedback from you about which reviews do you want to see. Because we have a lot of games we haven't reviewed. And we don't always get the newest games right when they come out and stuff. So, you know, getting that feedback with you guys is really appreciated. Yeah. So, if you have anything to say about this game, have you played it? Does this make you want to buy it? Um, let us know down in the comments. And just remember, no matter how you play, whether it's solo, with family, or friends, enjoy whatever games you are bringing to the table. Have a great night.